My favorite outdoors experience actually happened when I was younger, and we were visiting my grandparents in Oregon. And dude, did you see Sasquatch? No, not that I knew. Okay. I think I was too young to know who Sasquatch was. Like, okay. my, like I hadn't had the talk yet with my parents, <laughs> or they explained to me who Sasquatch was. You know, like the talk you get. Yeah, the talk. Welcome to Three Guys, Three Questions, where three friends test the limits of propriety through the questions we ask. Today is full of pollen. This week, we're sponsored by Pine Cones, Grassy Knolls, and Beyonce Knolls. I'm Aaron L.M. Goodwin, and I'm joined, as always, by Andrew Savage. Say hello, Andrew. Hey, how's it going? It's going really, really, really well. Good to hear. Good to hear. Mm, it's just mm, it's just like warm, and, and uh, spring is all about us. Mm. It's great. It's pretty good. I'm also joined by Adam Survivor Man Anderson. You can't hear this on the podcast, but I'm wearing flannel for this occasion. Mm, Are you playing a harmonica, mayhaps? Well, I'm not doing it right now. Oh. um, But I will afterwards. What did you survive? (laughs) Um, I survived man. It's right there in the name. I'm Survivor Survivor Man. Mm. I don't don't think they call Superman Superman because he's... Super of men. Well, maybe they do. <laughs> nope, that's exactly why they call it. <laughs> yeah, Superman. I just realized that this, <laughs> the naming of Superman was pretty lazy. <laughs> you why? just realized why? that now? Just now. And now I'm thinking about all the superheroes like Batman and Spider Man are pretty terrible names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any man name. Are you are name. you just now getting Ant Man? No, I've always understood that one. <laughs> If you're new to the show, here's how it works. Each host asks a question, then each host gives their answer. Hilarity hopefully ensues, and we move to the next question. Andrew has today's first question, so take it away, Andrew. I will take it away. My question is, what is the one thing from the outdoors that you would like to bring indoors? Oh, I would love to bring trees inside. <laughs> and I'm not talking about like little house plants, because I, I know you can do that, right? Right. But like full grown, like 40 foot tall trees, that would just like, if I could basically live in a forest that was indoors, I, that'd be the happiest living environs for me. I would just, mm, mm. So like a green house? That would be awesome. So like you would, would you build a house like around a tree? Would you do that if you had unlimited money? Like, I don't just want an tree. I want many trees. So It's like the Tropical Forest Cafe restaurant. <laughs> Rainforest Cafe? <laughs> yeah, the Rainforest Cafe. Now, I don't really want animatronic toucans per se. Well, you know what? You... I guess I wouldn't be against them. <laughs> but you want the trees. And like... Yeah. Like, what if... Oh, okay. I would, I would like the animatronic toucans if they had the guts from the Amazon uh, Alexa in them. So I could just like ask the toucan to tell me the weather and stuff oh, like that. Oh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> toucan, pick up where I left off on Between the World and Me. <laughs> and it starts moving its mouth and talking. Right. Wow. And it's just like reading me my book. <laughs> I could probably make that for you. I could do that. I could see that em- like not emotionally scarring, but but certainly <laughs> making them different. It's definitely the not kids. preparing them for the real world. <laughs> you, you definitely wouldn't have their friends over. They go to school and they're like, you mean you don't have a toucan that reads you books? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> the I I used to always when I was a kid like going to to malls because like back in the eighties and early nineties malls would always have like trees in them right like there'd be like in between the halls there'd be like kind of atrium looking things and there'd be trees I, just, something about having that tree in there just like made me feel so happy because it was like reminded me I think like primordially there's like my genetics. My ancestors were forest dwellers somewhere along the lines, and like, well, I think if you go far enough back, we well, all were we're all were forest. Well, dwellers. far enough back, we were all dwelling in savannah, actually. But well, you went a little bit too far back, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in between then and now. I, but I just like, oh, I just love being in the forest. Like, probably, oh yeah, mm, yeah, forest. I want to live in a greenhouse. Basically, can we do that? Can I? Oh, can I make it happen? I don't like. I don't think it's against the rules. Like. Nobody's going to stop you. I guess it would be difficult because 
Because my favorite hobby is throwing stones. Right, yeah. And if I literally <laughs> oh live in gosh. a glass house. No, you're not allowed to finish that joke. <laughs> Too late. I did it. Yeah. You know what, Andrew? I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> well, It's been six seasons and it's taken this long for me to like one of your jokes. <laughs> this, is a real, this is a real big moment for us. <laughs> Uh, before I don't before I spoil it, Adam, what's what's your thing that you'd like so, to bring from like, outdoors? Trees was going to be my answer, mm -hmm. like a lot like yours, but then I realized we already do that every Christmas. <laughs> That's a dead tree, but yeah. <laughs> but like, just just sunlight, but not like sunlight through the windows because it's different. There is something different about it, huh? There's there's something really different about like sunlight in a for like being filtered through leaves. It's almost sterile when it comes in through a window. Yeah, like I don't know what it is. Like it just it's just it's it's lifeless. Like it's 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 just... like airplane. It's like airplane oxygen. Yeah, like you you know there's oxygen in here, but it's not there's, right. There's no color to it. There's there's no life in it. Mm, but like. Yeah. The sunlight you get in when you're sitting in a forest and it's like filtered through these leaves, mm -hmm. like I want that in my life all of the time. Yeah. Like um, there is there is a this road that I loved to drive on mm -hmm. in in Kentucky, and it was just out in the the backwoods, just the middle of nowhere. And for whatever reason, it had like just recently been repaved, so it was like this perfect black tarmac. Mm -hmm. And just these bright yellow, I mean, road lines, right? I mean, just the colors were just incredible. It looked like out of a like uh, a magazine ad yeah. for a car. Yeah. Yeah. And there weren't, for, for whatever reason, like on most roads in Kentucky, there's ditches for drainage on, on both sides. But by this road, there weren't. I guess they just didn't have any drainage problems in that area or they just didn't care where the water went. Mm -hmm. So the trees grew right up to the, like right up next to the road. Oh. And they just formed this like canopy over the road and like their their branches were just touching. I love that when like you're in like a tunnel of vegetation. Yeah. So you're just like in this tunnel of of forest, just driving through it, and the light would just filter down through and it would just be a little bit green and just everything felt so alive. Mm. And that's what I want to bring inside to my house so that it's not cold outside anymore. <laughs> well, because you're you're in this stark Winter times, the hellscape. <laughs> You're basically living in the revenant. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm the deep throes of winter right now. So mm, I'm sorry. Like today, there was an inversion. Ugh, I hate. Which I hate is just that like. Term. I don't know what that means. I don't know why it's called that, but it's, it's basically called, it's not an inversion. What it means is the wind changed direction, and all the pollution we've been pumping out in this valley has blown back upon us and we're somehow unexpectedly fraught with worry about it, but unwilling to call it what it is. Karma wins. <laughs> Karma wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So whatever, whatever like meteorological thing happened going outside today, um, I was worried that I was going to breathe in some cancer. Mm. So, um, I don't want that inside. I want that. Uh, I don't even want that outside. I want no, that just nowhere. Nowhere. Um, but yeah, it, it made me miss that road in Kentucky quite a bit where the air was clear and the sunlight was life giving. Andrew. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was falling asleep talking about. <laughs> it was just so <laughs> soothing. The idea yeah, it was of it. just so. It's great for a comedy podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that I was supposed to be funny. All here, the time. Here, let me let me let me that throw would in a joke. A lot. <laughs> Does that make it better? That make, that make all better, better. All better. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. So it hasn't been ten minutes yet. So I thought I would. My answer would be food related. <laughs> um, um. But it's not necessarily outdoorsy, but things you do outdoors. Um. Because I, you when you go camping, mm -hmm. the best thing you can do to go camping is you bring your Dutch oven with you. Oh, and I don't, I don't mean farting under your blankets and having someone. Else I was gonna say because I do that indoors now. So. Yeah, that, that actually, you, you know what? That's what indoors. the inversion feels like. It feels like the earth. <laughs> like out. you're living in a Dutch oven, <laughs> just just a <laughs> citywide Dutch oven. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds about uh, right. I don't know if that's a scientific term. Like, like Provo's Dutch ovening us right now. It's like, how do you like it? Anyway. <laughs> 
Anyways, All right, so the, the good Dutch oven. <laughs> um, I don't know if you have ever partaken of food made in Dutch ovens, but it's pretty amazing. And I don't know what it is about. Yeah, what is it? Because I don't understand the scientific thing that's going on because you can make desserts. My art reaction. <laughs> you, did you just make that up? No, that's oh, really? uh, caramelization of things, of sugars, right? To make... Oh. To oh, make uh, um, I'm just gonna, flavor. I'm just going to agree with you. Mm. The Maillard reaction. So, but I don't know what it is, but it's like you can't recreate that in your home. Like I've, I've bought a Dutch oven and like put it in my oven to try this out. Mm-hmm. It's not the same. Yeah. Well, you can't put coals on top of it. That's true too. I mean, if you can, but you'll probably burn the house down. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I have a Dutch oven too and it's, yeah, it's something about it. I think it has to do with. You're eating the food outdoors. Usually you've been doing something that expends a, a, a higher than average amount of calories. Yeah. So you're like more hungry than normal. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. And and the kind of food you eat when you're camping is just like that's going to be tasty anyway. So then you're just adding on top of that. <laughs> Like, I don't know, like, I nobody's, nobody is, like, at home, like, regularly making, like, a giant batch of peach cobbler, right? Like, oh, but they should be. I mean, I guess they should. <laughs> Dude, I want to get, okay, that's my what, plans what do you for make this in Dutch? Week. What do you make in Dutch ovens? Like, what's uh, your favorite You can foods? make anything. Well, you, I'm you can specifically. Make, um, well, there's always the, the famous uh, cobbler, which is always good. Mm. But no, you can make stews. Mm. Um, at one time, I think someone made like a casserole on the fire, and I'm like, "How did you do that?" And it was awesome. <laughs> it was just yeah. so good. I don't, I don't have a lot of good memories of of camping food, and maybe that's just because I was in the Boy Scouts. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I think, I think I was in. Andrew was. Well, maybe the Boy Scouts in my troop were just really bad at cooking. Yeah, that's I, true. Our the our scout master. I don't know if he's our scout master, but whoever was doing the cooking. The guy operating the chuck wagon, <laughs> he, 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 uh, he was a, um, I think he was a paramedic and a fireman for like a firefighter for like years and years and years and years. He's like maybe in his like sixties. So like he'd had years of cooking for brawny men, <laughs> right? you know? And so when he, when he cooked in that Dutch oven, it was just like eating. It was like, it was like you were just eating pure gravy but it would didn't feel like you're eating pure gravy like it felt like real food but it was as good as gravy if that makes any sense he would cook oftentimes by like not he wasn't preparing anything he was just dumping cans of different things into the dutch oven and stirring it and somehow it just ended up amazing and i could never replicate it yeah no one time uh the uh like the the young, how old how young are scouts like 12 years old or something uh, start or four- maybe around 12 yeah the youngest group of scouts were preparing breakfast for everybody because mm-hmm. they needed a merit badge <laughs> so they decided to make pancakes and i don't know if you know this about merit badges but sometimes it's more about doing the thing than doing the thing well <laughs> <laughs> i you could probably say that about most things not just merit <laughs> badges like my taxes <laughs> <laughs> and so somehow they managed to burn one side of every single one of the pancakes they made us. <laughs> At least so, they learned their lesson every pancake they made. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't last till the next pancake. <laughs> or was it like a huge number of the scouts and they all only made one pancake? So they never got a chance to do better the next time. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. They were all burnt on one side and it was terrible. And when you're camping and you're hungry... Like something being burned isn't necessarily going to stop you, but you're not going to continue for longer than you need to. So it was like, we're going home by lunchtime, so I'll eat half of a pancake. What do I do with the rest of this pancake? And you don't want to like throw it away in front of the cook. Mm. So we ended up just like walking to the edge of the campsite and just throwing it as hard as we could into the woods. I just got like mega depressed because I thought about it. Like, I think I'm kind of like that pancake. You're burnt on one side. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said I'm the first pancake <laughs> in my family because I was like the f- oldest experiment. And then like as you're describing like how you don't want to emba- oh. be embarrassed and you like throw it away. I was like, are that's me. To, are we trying to get people to cry? I mean, we would. We were tossing these things like frisbees to see how far we could get them to go. Because they each, they gave us each like four pancakes. They're just here for your own enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've that's ever good. seen 
my, I'm really good at pancakes, so my first pancake is always perfect. Oh, well, guys, okay. I really love how this conversation continued. <laughs> Adam was still talking about pancakes, and Aaron is still t- is talking about how depressed he is. But neither of you caught on. It was pretty good. I caught on. I don't understand. I don't think. I don't know why you thought that I didn't. <clears throat> I was trying to cheer him up by telling him that my first pancakes are great. You're, you're trying to cheer me up by talking about how great you are. That sounds about right. No, no, no. About how great first pancakes can be. All right, my question is, what's the least outdoorsy thing you've done outdoors? Uh, so my story comes from another Boy Scout camp out. Of course it does. Mm. Yeah. So like the, 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 there was the, the scoutmaster and then like the assistant scoutmaster or whatever. Mm-hmm. And their sons were visiting for like the summer or whatever. And they were like 21 or 23 or something like in that range. Okay. Just that. Too old for Boy Scouts, but too young to be responsible, you know? Still still really awkward when they wear the Scout uniform. Yeah, so they didn't wear the <laughs> Scout uniform. Oh, uh, <laughs> Who's looking good in the Scout uniform? Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like, I've just, I, I had just watched Moonrise Kingdom and nobody in that movie. Yeah. Like, not even Edward Norton can pull that off. I think he pulls it off. I think he was doing a good job. <laughs> okay, well, all right, then. Never yeah. Mind. He's got really great thighs. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say to that. Tell me your story. Um, so anyway, so nighttime comes, the fire burns down. Everybody else goes to bed. And then I hear like this laughing from these two men's trucks because they had come on the they had come on the camp out with us. And they like I just hear them laughing mm-hmm. like by their truck. So I go over to investigate because I have a hard time sleeping. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, like, I see this glow and I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and they had plugged in a TV and a DVD player into their <laughs> truck and they were watching UHF. <laughs> of course they are. And so I was like, this is, this is the perfect scout camp activity. <laughs> Wheel of fish, man. So I watched, I watched UHF with them. And I was like, this doesn't make a ton of sense, but I love it. Was that the first time you saw that? That was the first time that I'd seen that. (laughs) Oh, man, that's crazy. I was probably like 13 or something. Mm. (laughs) That's like the perfect age to watch UHF. It really is. Like, I got introduced to UHF at the perfect time. That's such a weird movie to bring on a camp out. You you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I I don't totally understand it. Like, I don't understand their thought process. Because I mean, they would have brought a scary movie or something. It was like a one night camp out. So it's right. You couldn't wait one night. (laughs) Maybe they have an addiction. I, it's a weird owl and they have to watch UHF every night. Yeah, like they were keeping up their streak. Like this mm. was before snap streaks. Mm. But I mean it was something like that, I guess. What's a snap streak? You do not you have Snapchat, right? Yeah. So when you snap the same person every day, that's a snap streak. And it keeps track of it for <sighs> you. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. Now you do. Yeah. Well, UHF. <laughs> that's kinda like mine, but um, Andrew, what about you? Okay, well, my first... Well, I was going to go with the answer sleeping because no one sleeps outdoors or can. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that's the answer I'm going to go with. <laughs> um, so this is also a, a story of us when we were camping um, with Boy Scouts. And we were actually at Scout Camp. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if any of our listeners have ever been to Scout Camp before, but by day five, it becomes Lord of the Flies. Like, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I remember one time there, cause there's like, there's like 15 to 20 of us in this camp in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And one of the other campers accidentally like knocked a tree down and fell on one of the other camp. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like just destroyed it. <laughs> like how, how big was the tree? It was a pretty big tree, but I guess it was like, <sighs> it was almost dead or something. So he was just kind of like, he was like propping himself up on it and then like <laughs> fell <laughs> And it freaking destroyed the tent. Nobody was in there, though. No one was in there, luckily. Oh, okay. okay. I was like, what? <laughs> but after that happened, the person whose tent was destroyed was pissed. It was <laughs> She was super upset. Yeah. And so we proceeded to have camp court. <laughs> and, and so we had we had like a judge, and we had lawyers, and we had yes. the, the defendant. 
and the plaintiff. Did you guys get dressed up as like Judge Robes and like? No, we didn't put that much thought into it. But did you you dress up like Judge Reinhold? (laughs) Yes. Was there a bailiff? A little, a little Boy Scout bailiff. I'm trying to tell my story, buddy. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting excited about the. Details. Wait, I just got a question. What what time of day was the the court at? It was um, it was sunset. So so technically, it would have been a night court. Uh, no, not yet. Halfway through, it was night <laughs> oh, court. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, sorry. But the this one camper who uh, who knocked over this tree had to plead his case of why it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and why it wasn't a likely or- story, <laughs> and so for like much longer than it should have been, <laughs> this these court proceedings we had witnesses like I don't know I saw him jumping around on it, <laughs> and there's like lies and accusations. <laughs> oh. It went on for like two hours. I <laughs> think this is the next John Grisham novel. I think this is the next season of Serial. <laughs> oh, there you go. Imagine that. It's so good. But it was it was so like heated by the end, like the jury all decided that he was guilty. No, <laughs> and he ended up having to pay for the tent. <laughs> wow! Wait, so, so your your camp court decision like held weight. Yeah, he then had paid for it later. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was. You don't freaking mess around in camp court. Oh my! Fa- that's my favorite detail of that Mountain story. Justice. Is that your decision? Like. <laughs> was enforceable somehow (laughs) because we all agreed as a unity that it was his fault and he should be responsible for it. Oh, this is the power of democracy in action. (laughs) I don't know if that was it. You guys, you guys should have gotten your civil service merit badge or something. (laughs) Yeah. That's amazing. Or a magic con. I'm just picturing like, like a stand like out made out of logs, (laughs) you know, like a, like a, like a jury's box. That's all logs. (laughs) <laughs> the gavel so, is made out of a log. <laughs> it's all logs. There's a there's a stenographer just writing on leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, could you repeat that? My leaf tour. It was so weird. I look back on it. It was just a haze. Like, <laughs> like I imagine people imagine Vietnam being. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty amazing. Um, uh, my story is kind of like Adam's. Uh, we we were gonna go camping in in uh, the desert at Lake Havasu. Uh, on the California side, there's like a little camping area, and we were gonna camp there, and then you know go out on the lake during the day and stay at camp at night and stuff. And this was like gonna be like a week long, and. Uh, so I was thinking like, you know, like, I mean, I'm probably going to get bored like by day three of like being in the lake. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's fun, but every while I'm going to want to do something else. And there's like nothing around there because you're in the middle of the desert. And so I, uh, <laughs> me and, and some of my friends who were going figured out what we'd need to take a TV <laughs> And so we got like one of those little TVs, like uh, how do, I don't even know how, like a ten inch kind of. It's those, those little black ones, right? Right, like with the with the black body, and it's got like the VCR built into the bottom there. I think I still have one of those. <laughs> and it's um, we took that, and and then we took <laughs> we took a thing that like a power converter thing, so that we could plug it into the cigarette lighter of someone's car. Um, and then and then I thought. Well, why don't I just bring my Dreamcast and my N64? <laughs> so, so we had video games <laughs> while we were camping, and the the adult leader that allowed us to do this was a guy named Duke Montag. He sounds like a Sunday morning cartoon. That is the best scout leader name ever. <laughs> Duke was, I think, seven. F- Foot one. I mean, you gotta be with a name like Duke. <laughs> and he wasn't like a skinny little wiry dude. He was like Paul Bunyan, big dude. Like when you shook his hand, his like entire hand just like enveloped your forearm in your hand. Was, <laughs> you felt like a little child, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and, and so it's like, well, if Duke says we can do it, like we tested it. 
because I, I brought the TV and I don't think anyone was looking because what we would do is we'd all meet up and we'd throw everything into a trailer and then they'd pull the trailer of all our stuff and then we'd get in cars and go with our leaders in the cars. But we didn't have the TV in the car. Uh, so like, I don't think they knew that I brought a TV, you know, like I just hid it in there and, but we were testing it out because I brought <laughs> me and Hey, someone, uh, you mentioned, uh, Andrew of uh, me and, uh, um, Chris, we oh, brought, nice. <laughs> we brought the Buster Rhymes album extinction level <laughs> event, <laughs> And we're like, Hey, can we listen to this? And he's like, all right. And we listened to Extinction Level Event uh, on the way there, which is like, I don't think kids should be listening to Extinction Level Event, but we were. So so I, I think just to make sure the people at home realize that scouts don't let you bring things with batteries. <laughs> they, don't, they don't like that. Like, I remember one time I brought my Walkman. I was very in trouble because mm-hmm. I, first of all, I had a Walkman Yeah, in general. And it was like 97. I should have had a CD player. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just so people understand that this was a very bad thing. Right. And, and, but like, we just, we just like got bored and we started doing it. And it like, everyone was like, oh, come on. But then eventually they'd join in because Mario Kart. Dude, Mario Kart is the great <laughs> uniter and divider. Yeah. And Shenmue. We play a little Shenmue. Um, it was fun times. Uh, I, I have no regrets. But I think I think now I, going back and looking at how people view me today, I think that was like a seminal moment in people forming their opinions <laughs> about me because because people like there's always these rumors going around that I like am a gamer and I just like spend all my time playing games, which like <laughs> you guys know is a joke. Cause yeah, no, that's not even close to true play. I don't even know what games are going on, but it's it's all because of that that camping trip <laughs> like he's got glasses he played games once he plays lots of games yeah he's a nerd <laughs> playing his video games oh my question is what is your favorite outdoors experience um my favorite outdoor ex- outdoors experience let me say that again my favorite outdoors experience actually happened when i was younger and we were visiting my grandparents in oregon and dude did you see sasquatch no not that i knew because i think i was too young to know who sasquatch was like like i hadn't had the talk yet with my parents (laughs) or they explained to me who sasquatch was you know like the talk you get yeah the talk (laughs) no but um i'm gonna butcher the name but we went hiking up in the mountains um and we saw these waterfalls and i'm gonna look up because i'm gonna mess up the name it's the molts noah Noham Falls? No, I messed it up so bad. <laughs> but <I> just <laughs> like, put in the show notes. I'm just going to sp- put it in the show notes so people look it up. But anyway, um, it's pretty freaking beautiful. And I'll just, for people who want to know, I'll put a link to. Is it the Mothman Falls? No. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but I remember we were really, I went really young and it was pretty different because I grew up in a place that doesn't get a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. And. It was really, it was like a rainforest in, compared to Southern California. And I remember just being so mesmerized by just all the water and the trees and how green and foggy it was. It was like I was on another planet. Um, and it was just like a really, like a brand new experience for me. It really made me appreciate that, realize that I didn't really, I haven't seen the world. Yeah. I still haven't, but now I know I haven't. <laughs> It was like a, it was like an awakening as a. You're like, wow, those places person. from X Files are real. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, that I was think that's my... just like my favorite thing about the outdoors is just when you go into the outdoors and you have like an outdoors experience, you realize just how much of the outdoors there are. Yeah, and I don't know. I I just I mean I might not have done a great job explaining that, but just realizing how big and beautiful the world can be when you go outdoors. Like that's my favorite thing about it. You could say there's more outdoors than indoors. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes, that's right, true. I've talked about on this podcast about how I've, I rode a scooter from California to St. Louis. Uh, and when you get outside and you're in, you're like not enclosed into a car, like the vastness of the space just really hits you. 
and and it's like super apparent how much empty wild space there is in the United States and like that makes me always makes me laugh when people are like there's too many people this it's overcrowded and I'm like there's a lot of space I don't know if it's just like the number of people that's the problem it's like probably other things but yeah no it's vast man it's pronounced Maltonoma Falls Malto meal yeah that's where it comes from mm, delicious you guys ever had Malto meal I've yeah. never had Malto meal what, but this, what? <laughs> Andrew shared this picture of Maltonoma Falls and it I mean it makes me want to go there I mean everything's so green and alive and just beautiful mm, yeah that's pretty that's pretty cool it reminds me of um Muir Woods. Have you guys ever been there? Oh, that sounds familiar. I don't think I've been though. It's up uh, by San Francisco. No. Oh, you know what? I have been, but I think we just drove through it. But it was pretty. pretty it's awesome. like it's like I know. I think I'm pretty sure part some of um uh do do that was that Ewoks movie Return of the Jedi. It's <laughs> out <Shot> there because <laughs> that's what it's called the Ewoks movie. The, 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 the Ewoks, Ewoks movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, I've always wanted to go to the Pacific Northwest. Mm, yeah, I've always wanted to live there. Uh, but like volcanoes and such. Are you worried about the, 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 the mega volcano? Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. You're worried about volcanoes. You literally live on a fault line. <laughs> right. But like, there's no volcanoes around here. If you're talking about the Yellowstone mega volcano, there's that, but there's also, that, that's, cause I mean, that's going to kill you no matter where you there's are. There's also the that Mount Rainier there's there's like a lot of volcanoes up there, man. It's like a geothermic hive of activity. Yeah, but there's more there's there's more earthquakes where you are than there are well, volcanoes yeah, but in earth, the Pacific. Earthquakes North don't West. scare me. Like, it's just like yeah, I'll agree with earthquakes you. Earthquakes kill so many more people. I don't know if that's necessarily mm, well. Yeah, probably not. Not in the United States, or at least not yeah. in this century, last century. I'd say not in the United States. And that's but <clears throat> welcome to safety talk <laughs> three guys three natural disasters <laughs> welcome to educated guests pretty not very well educated um <laughs> but what, what yeah anyhow uh that's a pretty cool place andrew did you have anything more to say about it or nah i suggest mm. going there or at least looking at pictures online Yes, I will. I will peruse that. My my situation is kind of similar. So, on a camping trip that, as scouts, we took to Yosemite National Park. I'm jealous. Um, it was like it was like a really big trip because we're like poor poor people from the we're poor desert people. We're dirt people out here. You know, <laughs> just with your moisture in, farms, living in just... sand dunes. <laughs> yeah. Um, your blue milk, blue milk, (laughs) uh, instant dehydrated bread. We, uh, so, so like, it was like a big deal to go on this trip to Yosemite. And so there was a lot of planning and preparation. And I remember like figuring out the list of everything we were going to take. Cause what we were going to do is we're going to go there base camp for a couple days and then hike the, the John Muir trail. And like the whole time I was kind of like, Man, this all that's like a lot of hiking. <laughs> it's like I'm not a huge fan of walking, especially like uphill and around boulders and then like And not flat surfaces. And then like knowing that at the end of the day I can't really relax cuz bears <laughs> and and like cuz everybody knows bears only get you when you're asleep. Well, pretty much. I mean, they don't come out during the day, really. They're kind of by them off on their own but um you just need to watch revenant like there there was that and i i didn't like we didn't have that much money like we were really like barely making it and so like the food that i could afford to bring i was looking at it and it was it was not food i want to eat after after burning like eight thousand calories in one day <laughs> hiking you know like i was not right. excited about that so i was not stoked about the idea of hiking but you know i planned it with with me and me and my buddy you know work together and i remember going to the store to buy some of the stuff with his mom and <laughs> she she had uh like opinion about everything we were buying um she's like letting her inner tiger mom come out and she was just like <laughs> it was stressing me out because like i couldn't afford the stuff that she wanted us to get cause she's like this too much sodium and I was like, well, it's cheap. So I don't know. It's that or the rocks up there. So. Yeah. I mean, 
So it I was like stressed out, if that makes any sense. And and we got there and we base camped and I actually started coming down with a cold. And to be honest, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but another guy came down with it, but it hit him really hard. So there was already a plan for one of my friends and his brother and his dad to stay back at the base camp. And I was kind of wanted to hang out with them because because he was like probably one of my closest friends that was going on this trip. And then the other guy was sick and him and his dad were staying. And I was like, I'm sick too. And I'm going to stay back. (laughs) So (laughs) I didn't have to go hiking. But the cool thing about that was it meant we could take a lot of smaller trips throughout the, the week and see a bunch of stuff. And the thing that was the coolest is it's called Lucan's Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like a really short trail. It's like maybe like two and a half, three miles. And you're hiking through the woods and you're kind of going uphill, but it's not that tough. It's not like really rough, but you can't see where you're going. Cause you're going through like redwoods and stuff like that. Um, and you're kind of in these little, like almost like, uh, canyon looking kind of things where there's like mountains and rocks on the other side. And you finally come over this little ridge and you see this lake. Uh, and it is just completely astounding. Like it, it, it's, it's just beautiful. There's this meadow in front of you. And at that time, the meadow was full of like lupins, like purple flowers and, and pink flowers and orange, like all these wild flowers. And then it, there was this lake in the middle of this small valley that was reflecting the mountains and the the forest on either side of it. And there was a lone kind of oak tree, I remember. And underneath the oak tree was like a young couple in love having a picnic. And then on the other side of the, the lake was a, was a, an older gentleman fishing. And it was just like, it just looked like a pharmaceutical commercial come to life. <laughs> It was so beautiful. It was like one of the most beautiful vistas I've ever seen in my life. And we were basically, other than those people, we were alone. There was no one else there. And so it was just, and and it, and it was one of those experiences like you described, Andrew, where it just all kind of started to feel real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like it was like, oh, like the world is beautiful. There's, there's so much amazing stuff to see. And yeah, so I, that was probably my favorite outdoor experience. Yeah. Like I think- the the best cure for just um, misanthropy and just thinking that the world is is a terrible place is just, just go outside and just I mean just look at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> just force right? me to look at it five hours a day. <laughs> I mean, well, like one of my one of my favorite quote. I can't remember who it's from, but he's from one of the one of the first astronauts to go into space and he and like go on a spacewalk. So he's out there just, I mean, floating by himself, like literally the furthest man away from anybody on the entire world, right? Mm. And he's just looking down at the earth and he's just, he, he says that he looked at it and he realized like how petty so many of the things that we're so concerned with are. Because I mean, this, I mean, the, you, you look at, you look at the continents from space and there's no like, there's no borders, there's no lines where certain countries are or anything. And it's just like, we're all just people living here. And it's amazing. Uh, I've seen so. that Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> Way to take me. That was, that was, I need to be taken down a notch. So I'm glad that you're My here. favorite Facebook post is John Muir quote where he says, I must break away and get into the mountains to learn the news. <laughs> Cause I think that's true. Like the real news is coming from the mountains guys. That's where you're getting your Sasquatch news. <laughs> That's where you're getting your bear news. Your bark news. Mm. Um, I'm super jealous. I, Yosemite's like on my bucket list. I really, really want to go. If you, if anybody within the sound of my voice has an opportunity, take it. Cause, cause it is the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. It is like a Disney Imagineer built it because it's so pristine. It's, it's like almost fake in its beauty like it's too (laughs) good (laughs) um it's not just an operating system (laughs) 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 the bell's back yay the bell wait where did the bell go it's always been here i just haven't dinged it in a while i like i like the bell Mm. so my answer for my question Mm -hmm. is um 
it was it was when I lived in Kentucky. So and I'd just gotten my Jeep. So I was sixteen or seventeen or so. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, it was it was uh, the first fall right after I think. So I was probably sixteen, and uh, I I pretty much had the top off for the entire summer, right? And the doors of the off Jeep, of the Jeep. Right? Of the Jeep oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, I, w- I was driving around without a shirt. Woo! Just the whitest skin you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just flapping in the wind, um, <laughs> bringing planes down. It's so bright. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'd driven around all summer with the top off of the Jeep, mm. right? And I I mean, the doors were probably off also. Um, and it was probably the first, like, really fall day. Like, the trees had just started to change. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't, like, cold during the day yet. And I was driving home um, from, from, like, the main town, Elizabethtown, back to my house in Rhineville, which was probably, like, Four miles away, and the the only way to get from my house to the, the to to the town was through this just windy country country road. Mm-hmm. And my favorite thing about Kentucky is that I mean, it's just it's all hills. Like there's nowhere that's flat in the in the entire state. Right, that's where the hill people come from. Yeah, that's where the hill people come from. And so you're just driving along on this country road, and it's like the sun is just set, so it's dark. And you're just going up and down these hills, I mean, just with the woods on either side of you. And the top is off, and you look up and you just see the stars. Because there's, I mean, there's practically no light pollution. And you're like, oh my gosh. I mean, there's the universe just above me while I'm driving home. Okay, this and then isn't you cool can't... that you just ripped off a Volkswagen commercial. <laughs> and then, I'm not I done th- with the story. I think it's just interesting that both your stories have to do with you being in the car observing nature. <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> not even done with my story. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, and, caller. Um... <laughs> so, I mean, I look up and I'm like, that's amazing. And then, um, like, I'm at the top of this hill and then I start going down. And at the at the bottom of this hill, like you just drive into this like sea of cold air, because because like the night is rolling in, and then you're like, oh, that's chilly, and then you come back up a hill and you just like break back yeah. into the break back into the hot air, and you're just like, oh wow, and you're just going up and down. And it's cold and it's warm, and you're just like connected to the outside, and you're just like, this is the world right here. Can I finish your story for you? And then the girl that you had a crush on in high school is there, and she's always had a crush on you too. <laughs> you guys go to the movies, and it's a great movie. It's the the third Batman movie. It's okay, but she was there, and it makes it awesome. Is that good? No, because after you come out of the movie, there's an empty parking lot, and she talks about how she's always wanted to dance in the rain, and yep. then it starts raining, and so you start dancing. That might be win a date with Tad Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm not gonna dispel either of these theories. You know, I'm just gonna let you have those fictions and let those let you have those things that are clearly special to you. <laughs> I'm gonna let you have those stories. <laughs> so yeah, man, like there's something different about being on the road at night with 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 at, like having your windows down at least, or like when I used to have my scooter, I love to like Right. Because it's like being connected with the outside is like a completely different experience than just it going past you almost like it's just like a a movie. It's like a like a movie going on in the background or something. Yeah. I I had a friend um, when I lived in Baltimore that during the winter, he liked to crank the heat all the way up in the car and then roll down the windows. (laughs) So it felt like we were in a jacuzzi as we were driving around. (laughs) That's probably good for the car. Yeah, sure. And the environment. Yeah, there's. Like, like we have a hot tub here at my apartment complex, and I mean, it's the middle of winter right now, and there are people in it. I was like, I don't understand the appeal of that. Um, it's because of women's bodies. <laughs> <laughs> because women's bodies. <laughs> Someone needs like to make that to a sticker. Like that's actually a significant portion of history. Just yeah. Right Ugh. <laughs> um. Yeah. We, me and my friends used to love going on what we would call uh alien hunts <laughs> which which involved driving in the night and taking random roads that we had no idea where they would lead us and like eventually because we, we live in the desert it would lead us to a dirt road 
which we would take, and we just drive around for hours and hours and see where oh, we ended up. Because those was, roads don't end. This, yeah, this was back when gas was wasn't so bad, so we could pull this off. But you it's just about, it costs about as much as it does now. <laughs> you're driving out in the <laughs> desert with the windows down and your head out the window and you're looking at all the stars and stuff. Yeah. It was a cool, we called it an alien hunt because that was the excuse we used <laughs> to go out there. Oh, we're we'll go, we're going, we're hunting aliens, but I mean, we never saw any aliens Yeah, really, but, but no, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. Like there's something different about driving through the world with your windows down than your windows up. Mm. I, I don't know. I think maybe it's just because we're so used to seeing so many things through a screen that, you know, our windows are up and like, Oh yeah, that's just another, that's just another thing. screen. That's just another fiction. That's just another thing I've seen a thousand times. But then you put that window down and all of a sudden you're like, Oh no, this is the world that I live in. Yeah. And then uh, if you're in LA or somewhere easy, you see someone pooping <laughs> or you I've smell a dirty mattress. <laughs> I've seen that in the desert, though. So, <laughs> so many mat. Where do these mattresses come from? There's so many mattresses everywhere. Like, is it that hard to throw away a mattress? I'm mean, kind of maybe. Is. Like, like is, is it harder to throw away throw a mattress into the middle of the desert than it is to take it to the dump? Are you saying you've never thrown a mattress in the back of your pickup and then just go out in the middle of the desert and just do donuts <laughs> until it flies out and then just drive away? No. I've never no. done that. I've never done it either, but it sounds pretty fun. I once, once, once we we were on, uh, we we made a bonfire. We used to like to go out into the desert and make bonfires. And one time, conveniently, where we parked, there was like a trash pile because that's the desert. People people don't want to take their trash to the dump and pay, you know, like the twenty dollars. So they drive out in the middle of the desert and dump their trash. But this was like a ton of tires. So I was like, oh, I'll build like a nice fire ring out of tires <laughs> and then the tires lit on fire who could have seen that coming and i had a tire smoke <laughs> fire and i was inhaling tire smoke oh, and man. down down the road we see because you can see forever because there's nothing in the way we see a fire truck coming <laughs> it's like oh crap oh, my and this goodness. fire truck is out on these ruddy dirt roads <laughs> in the desert coming out they come out they don't even say anything. They just get their hose and they, they hose it out. And then, and then one of them looks at me and looks at us and he's all, who's the mother? Are you the mother? And I was all, huh? <laughs> what? Dude, I'm a dude. <laughs> but I was like the only one who was like of age. So I just like answered for it. And I was like, sorry, we didn't know. We didn't know that tires don't on fire. I didn't know tires were flammable, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Remember, your ratings fuel us, so please rate and share the show wherever you listen to it. You can subscribe to receive new episodes the moment they're released by going to 3g3q.co slash subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so where can people get a hold of you? Um, still on Twitter, um, A underscore Sav. I'm also on Twitter at that Adam Kid, and I'm probably in the woods, too. Yeah, after this episode, I'm going to be in the like, woods. I'm going to go I'm gonna go for a hike. Hmm. It's still too cold out, guys. I'm not. I'm it's not, not. It's so nice here. It's like gonna be 80 tomorrow. It's, it's. You know, I'm excited for next week because it's supposed to be a high of 35. <laughs> oh, that is so sad. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> other than that, I just wanted to say fare thee well to everyone, and I want you to remember that everything tastes better cooked in a Dutch oven. I also want you to remember that you should watch UHF as God intended in a pickup in the woods. I also want you to remember to roll those gosh dang windows down. Take your top down. And I also want you to remember to question everything. One time when I lived down there in the desert, um, there was a, a pair of my friends who they were driving a Toyota Corolla and they, mm -hmm. they were like, oh yeah, we'll just, you know, go exploring on these dirt roads. <laughs> um, and they missed, they mistook, um, 
a wash that was just full of sand mm. for a road for some reason. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I mean, this was pro- like, it wasn't nighttime yet when mm. they buried their Toyota Corolla, like all four <laughs> wheels. I mean, just to the body. <laughs> um, but they didn't call anybody until after nighttime to come and find them. They kept thinking so. they could pull it off and nobody wouldn't be the wiser. Yeah, they're like, no, we can get out. And like they were trying to use a skateboard to dig themselves out. Or something. <laughs> just, like, just call somebody with a truck, you doofuses. Oh. So they finally did. They called, they called my roommate who had a truck. And um, so we went out with them trying to find them. And they were, we were like, where are you? And they're like, oh, no. I was like, of course you don't. Know. <laughs> we're in the desert. <laughs> Let me, let's start a fire so they can find us. There's some tires. Are they flammable? I don't know. I don't think tires are flammable. I don't think so. We'll they might be that. flammable. Let's try. I'm, I'm directly under the moon right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's that you, you laugh, but they actually did that. <laughs> well, hey, that was a good show.